Diyasha and welcome to another exciting series of lessons where we'll be examining the idea of acids, bases and salts. This series follows on from a previous series called Acids and Bases where we identified and classified acidic and basic substances using indicators, examined the pH scale and showed how important these substances are in our daily lives. In this series, we will focus on the chemical reactions that take place when acids and bases are involved in chemical reactions. Of course, we will need to make careful observations of our experiments and write balanced chemical equations for each of the reactions taking place. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the products formed when an acid reacts with an alkali and write balanced chemical equations for this type of reaction. Okay, so in this lesson we will focus on the idea of neutralization. Let's start by looking at a simple experiment. Hi everyone, have a look at what we're doing here. In this burette I have some hydrochloric acid and in the flask here I have some sodium hydroxide. I'm going to add a few drops of universal indicator to the sodium hydroxide and it turns a purple blue. This tells us that it has a pH of about 12. I wonder what would happen if I added the acid to the flask. Think about it. Let's see if your predictions are correct. Did you see the indicator changed color? That means the pH has changed too. I'm going to take some of this solution and pour it into an evaporating dish. We'll leave it for a while and we'll come back and have a look at it a little later. Bye for now. Thanks John. Now remember, we can check the pH by comparing the color of the solution to the universal indicator reference chart. Now the color of this solution is green, so when comparing it to the color on the chart, we can see that the pH of the solution is now 7. This solution is neutral. We say the hydrochloric acid has neutralized the sodium hydroxide solution. But how did this happen? Well, we need to recap some definitions first. Can you remember how we defined an acid and a base? An acid is a proton donor. A base is a proton acceptor. Remember, a hydrogen ion is also called a proton. So, in this solution of hydrochloric acid, I have a high concentration of hydrogen ions. In the alkali, the concentration of hydrogen ions is low and the concentration of hydroxide is high. Take a look at the following animation to see what happens to the hydrogen ions when we add some acid to the alkali. The hydrogen ions are donated by the acid and the alkali accepts these hydrogen ions. They combine with the hydroxide to form water molecules. When every hydroxide ion has combined with a hydrogen ion, we can say that the acid has neutralized the alkali. We can say that the concentration of the hydrogen ions is equal to the concentration of the hydroxide ions. This means the pH is 7, just like the pH of pure water. Now, we have shown that one of the products is water, but what about any other products? Let's take a look at the chemical equation to see if this will give us a clue as to what may be happening here. Right. To start with, we have sodium hydroxide and this has a formula NaOH. We added hydrochloric acid which has a formula HCl. Now we have seen that the hydrochloric acid donates the hydrogen ion to the sodium hydroxide. 
the hydroxide ion accepts the hydrogen ion and water is formed. Now can you see that we are left with sodium ions and chloride ions? These will stay dissolved in the water. Do you think there's any evidence of this product? Let's go to John's lab to have another look at the product that he left in the evaporating dish. Let's have a look at what I've got here. In the original solution, nothing much seems to have happened. But what about in the evaporating dish? Notice some of the water has evaporated and on the sides I have some crystals forming. These white crystals are sodium chloride with a formula of NaCl. Wow, isn't that amazing? Let's take a look at the overall reaction. Sodium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid react to form sodium chloride and water. Notice that the equation is balanced as it stands. Now sodium chloride belongs to a group of substances called salts. In fact, sodium chloride is known as table salt and is used to flavor food. But what is a salt? Here is the definition. A salt is a substance that forms when the hydrogen ion of an acid is displaced by a metal ion. Let's put this definition into practice. We used hydrochloric acid to make sodium chloride. So starting with hydrochloric acid, can you see that when hydrogen is displaced by sodium, we get sodium chloride? Now here's a question for you to think about. If hydrochloric acid formed a salt, that is a chloride, when it reacted with an alkali, what salt would form when sulfuric acid or nitric acid reacted with sodium hydroxide? Let's look at the formula of these acids as a starting point. Sulfuric acid is H2SO4 and nitric acid is HNO3. Now, if the alkali neutralized these acids, the hydrogen would be replaced by the sodium ion to form salt and water. H2SO4 becomes Na2SO4. HNO3 becomes NaNO3. Now I think it's safe to say that these salts can be called sodium sulfate and sodium nitrate. So far, we have introduced some important ideas about neutralization in this lesson. Let's recap what we have learned so far. When an acid reacts with an alkali, the products formed are salt and water. We can write this as a general equation. An acid plus an alkali react to form salt plus water. Also remember that a chloride salt forms when hydrochloric acid has been neutralized. A sulfate salt forms from sulfuric acid. And a nitrate salt forms from nitric acid. Now let's take a look at your task for today. Write balanced chemical equations for the following reactions. Number one. Nitric acid plus sodium hydroxide. And number two, sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide. In our next lesson, we will take a closer look at the technique used in chemistry laboratories to accurately neutralize acids. This process is known as a titration. Make sure you don't miss out. Till then, goodbye.